Hello guys and welcome to episode 2 of Random Thrift Store Retro Computer Finds. We review old technology from games to all PCs and don't forget the doll. We don't lose all get ancient electronics. We cover it all. Now this is technically episode 2. A couple years back I did do a video on like a random computer I found at a thrift store. Um, so I'm kind of considering that my episode one, but I think I might turn this into a thing because a lot of times I will pick up retro computers at thrift stores or yard sales or whatnot and you know I don't really have a specific thing or theme. Um, usually when I do my videos I have like a certain theme or if it's like a an OEM machine or something along those lines. But there's really just a lot of these sort of generic uh, PC compatibles out there that aren't OEM. They maybe, they maybe were built at some local place um, and they might not even be very interesting in there and it's like uh, well, what do you do a video on that? What am I gonna do with this? Or sometimes I'll just pick it up for the case is really cool or you know to see what parts are in it but the, the machine itself isn't all that interesting but I think it, it's it's kind of cool in the sense that you know like on this channel I do a lot of like ultimate builds where and you see this a lot in like the retro PC community on YouTube it's always not always, but a lot of times you're building like high-end stuff. And I think this is a good opportunity to just kind of look at what people were just kind of using. Um, even if the video card's kind of bland, uh, even if it's all just kind of bland and blah, it's, it's just kind of fun to see like this is what someone was using out there uh, at the time. So yeah, I picked this up for like five bucks. Um, the case, I love this case. Uh, power, turbo hard drive. Uh, it, I have opened this up. Uh, spoiler, I do know what's in here. Um, but uh, yeah, three three digit LED. I don't have a lot of cases with three digit LED. Turbo button reset. Uh, nice big rocker switch there. Ah, I love this case. You're, you're probably going to see this case um, in another video. I'm, I'm, I haven't made up my mind 100% what I'm going to do with this case, but um, but anyways, yeah, let's take a look at this thing. Let's just take a look inside. I, I tell you, I, I have removed, I have been in this machine. I did boot it up once. Um, there's no hard drive in there. I did remove like an ethernet and the uh, modem card. I don't, I don't think that's super interesting anyways. Um, but what else, the rest of the stuff that's in there is just how I found it. Um, so yeah, we've got Hull, Hull Technologies, H-A-L-L. Uh, this looks like it was just probably just printed up in some <laughs> some local shop, uh, I guess. And now we can see on the back too that it is an AT style case. So, uh, considering the AT style case and just the general look of the case, I was really hoping for a uh, well, a socket three or something along the 486 line or even older maybe. But Unfortunately, on opening it, uh, I looked at the CP right away, and I saw a 7 right there, and I knew this was a early Socket 7 board. And I, I have to say, I was a little disappointed, just because I've, I'm Socket 7'd out. Uh, I've, I've, I've come across a lot of Socket 7 boards in my day, and although some of them are still interesting, in general, I don't really find them all that interesting anymore. Um, not to say that they can't make excellent uh, retro computers. Uh, I would just rather see something else. Um, another thing that I noticed right away is this board was strikingly familiar. Um, you know, there's the cash stick there, and these real suspicious chips right here, and just like the layout here with how the RAM is. Um, and uh, I did a little research, and yeah, this is the M520, the PC Chips M520. And it might look familiar because... Now, there are several uh, revisions of this board, but this is the infamous PC Chips uh, M191, I believe, uh, motherboard, the PCI uh, Socket 3 motherboard. And, um, yeah, here's, you know, this is the one with the fake cache chips, um, and then it has the really rare and hard to find uh, Coast module if you want L2 cache. And basically, the M520 board that's in that machine is just the Socket 7. 
uh, updated version of this motherboard. It's it's almost say it doesn't have the VLB, um, and it, it, there's some little differences, and it's got an Intel chipset, but it's it's basically the same layout. Um, so yeah, yay PC chips. A actually, to be honest, um, this board it's mounted on my wall because this uh, overdrive nor the motherboard function anymore, um, and I couldn't figure figure out how to repair it, so I just kind of put it on the wall here. But uh, this board actually. When you get it working, and I've done a video, I don't know if I did a video, I know I did a blog entry um, on a machine a while back that has this board. I, I kind of like this board. Once you've, you've kind of, it's picky, but once you've got it going, you've got the right RAM in there, and if you have the cache stick, it's actually pretty damn fast for a Socket 3 motherboard, and it accepts a wide range of later CPUs. I, I think it's even the only motherboard that uh, in BIOS supports some of the, the later Cyrix uh, special features. So it's actually a good fast board if you can get it running, but it has a lot of quirks. Anyways, back to the Socket 7 machine. So back to this guy here. Yeah, uh, the hard drive's missing. Um, it does have... I don't know if the floppy and CD drive work yet. Um, I haven't really tested this other than posting. Now, as I said earlier, there was originally a modem and an Ethernet card in here, which I did remove. Uh, but we do have a sound card and a video card. And I'm just going to remove those. We'll take a look at those in a minute. But I'm just going to remove them uh, so we can get a better look at this board. And here we go with those uh, card, the sound and video card removed. Now, being an earlier Socket 7 board, this isn't Super Socket 7, so you've got uh, three PCI and four 16-bit ISA. There's no AGP. Um, it also doesn't support any CPUs with split uh, voltage. So I believe only up to the Intel Pentium 200 um, megahertz non-MMX. Uh, or I think I'm not I, for some reason on the top of my head I can't recall if they made a Pentium 233 that wasn't MMX but I do know this will not support the MMX CPUs or any of the CPUs with uh, split voltage or dual voltage now there is a spot right here for a voltage regulator so I believe if you can find the appropriate regulator and install it uh, then you can then it can support uh, split voltage CPUs at least whatever the BIOS uh, will support. Um, so right, I believe there's a... I believe it's a Pentium 166 in there right now. Uh, it could be a 133. I, I briefly booted it up just to see if it would post, and it did. I believe it was a 166 uh, Pentium. Here's our cache stick. Again, I do not recall uh, what the amount of L2 cache is on this. Um, there's a cache... <laughs> cache chip here, but if it's like the earlier Socket 3 version of this board, um, I can't really tell, but this this might be fake. There's another one next to it. It might be fake, uh, but I'm not sure. Um, we have the Intel chipset here, the Intel uh, 437VX uh, chipset here, so the VX chipset. Uh, RAM uh, looks like 72 pin, and then, where is that? Yeah, it looks like 72 pin, and then we have a the uh, larger, what, what is it, 132 pin. Uh, I forget off the top of my head, but right now I believe it has 64 uh, megabytes of RAM installed, and uh, your built-in uh, floppy and the IDE uh, connectors, two of them. So, yeah, that's about it. Nothing uh, horribly interesting on this guy. I don't know much about this motherboard. I'm guessing because it's PC chips uh, that's kind of garbage. But I actually, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a reliable board. Um, I don't know. If, if you have any experience with this motherboard, let us know in the comments. So uh, let's take a look at the two cards in this machine. They're actually not that boring. They're actually kind of interesting. And the video card that we had installed in this thing when I picked it up is our good old friend, the... PCI version of the ATI Mach 64. It's a fairly prolific uh, 2D uh, video card. It, it's this is a, this isn't a bad card. There were a couple different revisions of it. This one actually has the uh, memory expansion module on it, which is pretty cool. Uh, these are decent like Windows 2D accelerators. No 3D capabilities, but this is a this is a decent 
2D card. I don't think it competes up there in speed with, like, say, the Arc Logic cards or the ET6000. Um, but this is a, this is, like I said, this is a decent um, 2D card. I think it's 2 megabytes, but I think this expansion adds another 2 for 4 megabytes. And I believe this is the GX version of the chip, which has is slightly enhanced uh, capabilities. Now, uh, I don't know if they made a... I know there's an ISA version uh, of this chip on ISA and VLB, and those are pretty sought after. This chip is 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 really nice, um, you know, if you're using VLB or ISA. But when you get to PC, when you get to PCI, there's just a lot of maybe not a lot of, but there's just there are better options. It, it loses a little bit of luster. I, I don't think it's considered uh, quite as high end. Uh, on PCI, but it's still a decent card. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to put this back in there and we'll see how it performs. And I did decide to remove the memory module just to take a look underneath. And then here is our memory module. And yeah, it says, what's it say here? It says 2 megabytes VRAM. Um, so, if that's 2 megabytes, I'm guessing uh, on card is also 2 megabytes. So, together they make 4 megabytes. Uh, what's the date on this? 1994. So, yeah. So I will uh, put this guy uh, back on, and then, like I said, I will reinstall this card. And we'll take a look at the uh, sound card, which is also something I've never seen before. So when I initially seen this card from the outside, I thought maybe it was just some kind of sound blaster, maybe. Um, and when I did t open the case up and take a look at it, I was initially kind of disappointed, because it was the Opti uh, chipset, and I haven't had a lot of luck with Opti chips. I haven't found the Opti chipsets in later cards to be very impressive. Um, but looking at it, this is the, let's see, the 82C uh, 930A, so the 930 chipset. And uh, I did have heard good things about the earlier Opti chipsets. Um, I believe the the 31 or the 29 uh, are thought of as, as pretty good chipsets. And I haven't seen a ton out there on the 930, um, but I'm guessing it, it might be a half-decent uh, Opti chipset. Um, the, the one bummer, I, I did not see an OPL FM chip on here. Some of them have discrete uh, FM chips. I, I didn't see one on this board, so it's either on here and it's been relabeled, or it's integrated somewhere. Um, I tried to look up some of these chips. I didn't really find anything. CM, I thought maybe maybe that. Um, I'm not sure. There's a couple couple smaller chips. Uh, but the one thing that did uh, get my interest here, this looks just like a standard IDE connector, but um, this, the Dream uh, chipset. Uh, Dream from France. This is the SAM uh, 9233. And there's another... There's another chip here, Dream, and then there's another one right here. Uh, and I think maybe that's memory for it. I, I think, I don't know, there's two chips here that might be memory as well. I'm not sure, but I believe this is uh, some built-in MIDI capability. Uh, as you'll notice, there's no wave uh, table header on this card. So I, I think this has built-in uh, MIDI, and I don't know much about this Dream chipset for MIDI, uh, but it might be... It might be decent, I don't know. Um, the thing is, I can't find any information on this specific card. Um, I found some information, a decent amount of information on this Opti chipset. Uh, it seems decent, but I, I, hardly anything on the Dream chipset here for the MIDI capabilities. And I can't figure out what this card is, like who specifically made it or any information on it. Um, there's, I've got this here, but I get nothing when I, I search for any of this. So if, if anyone watching has any information on what the heck this card specifically is called, does it need specific drivers, I don't know. Uh, any comments on this chipset or this Dream MIDI chipset, I, I don't know. But I do find this, this kind of interesting. So I am going to put this back in. Um, now, like I said, the, the hard drive's been removed from this guy, so I'm going to find an appropriate hard drive and put it in there. And I'm going to install, I think I'm just going to maybe put in DOS 6.22 and uh, maybe Windows 95. I think we'll go with Windows for this. And I'm just leaving it as is, other than putting in the hard drive and uh, installing an OS. We're just leaving it, more or less as I found it, minus the networking cards, which are kind of irrelevant to me. And then um, 
we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if, if we can find drivers. Um, the ATI shouldn't be a problem, um, but I, and the, the Opti itself chipset driver shouldn't be an issue. Um, I don't know if I'm going to need special drivers, though, to get some of these features for the sound card to work. I don't know. So uh, we're just going to do our best, I guess, and then we'll see how it goes. All right, so uh, I've been talking to some people over at Vogan's about this card, and uh, I just wanted to share just a few minor things. And first of all, when I refer to these things that, like the Opti chipset, I don't actually know if that's a chipset because it's just one chip. Uh, I don't know if it's all considered a chipset. I don't know. Semantics. If it's wrong, uh, please excuse my ignorance, but I, I just refer it to chip. There may be more than one. I just refer to it as a chipset. I actually don't know if that's the wrong or right terminology for referring to things like this on a on a sound or on a sound card so correct me if I'm wrong I guess in the uh, comment um, now the first thing I want to point out about this card is I can't find another example of it I don't think it's like super rare or anything like that but looking on the internet uh, I couldn't find another image of this exact uh, card now there were plenty of cards with this opti chip on here the uh, the uh, 930A and uh, some of those actually had like real FM chips on the card this one though uh, after looking and checking all the chips and uh, having some people on Vogan's look at it it doesn't appear that there is any uh, FM capabilities on here uh, I don't think it's integrated into the uh, this chip there's no uh, original uh, FM chip on here anywhere and there's no clone chips on here anywhere um, so what we concluded that probably means is the uh, MIDI chipset over here is going to be emulating the FM and uh, it's probably not gonna be very good <laughs> so I don't expect the FM from this car to be any good now I didn't get too many comments on this uh, the Dream chipset here for MIDI, uh, although I was told that it's pretty decent. It's kind of like it's almost you know to Roland uh, sound canvas kind of quality. So it should be a decent general MIDI uh, sound from these chips here, uh, but I guess we will see. So I'm gonna put this thing back in the machine. All right, so I am uh, I'm a little uh, eager to see what this thing sounds like. Okay, so this is kind of neat and possibly sad. I just noticed this looks like the definitely the original CPU because it still has the warranty if seal is broken sticker on it. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the original one. Maybe someone slapped that sticker on it or whatever, but um, that's kind of neat. Anyways, uh, it definitely is a original Pentium 166, so it's the 166 version of the Pentium. Um, unfortunately, I just hooked it up and uh, I had this hard drive hooked up a minute ago and I was powering it up to uh, start you know installing the OS and it posted and I went to the BIOS to detect the hard drive and it froze up and um, I don't know I, I opened the case and I noticed the fan was not spinning um, so I, I, I you know cleaned everything up and um, I got this fan, you know, I got it to spin, and I put it all back together, and I started it up again, and now I just get uh, continuous beeps. It will not post anymore. Um, so I wonder, I wonder if it overheated. I wonder if it fried the CPU. It wasn't, it wasn't on very long when it locked up, um, and it, whoops, and it did have the heat sink on it. It's just the fan wasn't stopped spinning. Um, so I don't know. Maybe that was long enough to fry the CPU. Uh, I don't. I th I think I have a, a a 166 around. I could put on there. Um, I, I can. I I think I have other Pentiums. Anyways, I could try slapping on there to see if it is indeed the CPU. I hate breaking that warranty seal after all these years, though. But uh, uh, I'm just kind of hoping it didn't fry the CPU. But we'll see. I'll let you guys know. All right. Looks like we're back in business. Um, it wasn't the uh, CPU. I don't know. I just kind of tried to reseed everything, and I moved the video card over one slot, and uh, we seem to be back in action. So far, the motherboard in this machine has been quite a hassle, but I guess I shouldn't expect too much from uh, a PC chips motherboard. Um, it, it, it's been one of those situations where you just kind of look at it wrong, and it stops working. If, if I'd moved the case around, or if I'd you know, even do nothing, it would just, I would, it would be working one minute, and I'd turn it off and 
maybe make a small adjustment and turn it back on and it wouldn't work. Uh, playing around with the IDE, you know, it, that was very hard to get a combination that was working uh, with like CD drives and everything uh, and the hard drive. It was just, it was very difficult. For a while, it was one of the more difficult boards just to get working uh, to really any capacity, but I think that's been sorted out. And to be honest, I think the majority of the problems I was facing actually had to do with a short somewhere. I'm not sure if it was the motherboard itself or if it was just touching somewhere that it was causing a short. And I think I've worked that out. I've readjusted the motherboard. I've, I've kind of moved things around and, and uh, it seems to be working reliably now. Um, now I did attempt to install Windows 95 as well, uh, but that didn't go well. Once it installed, uh, it would not load into Windows. It would get to a point and it would just lock up and you'd get weird lines across the screen. And I've tried everything. I went tried going into safe mode. I tried um, just uh, like adjusting different parameters. I went through the, the uh, loading of Windows step by step and, you know, I, I was changing things, command lines and stuff, and it just it was not working. It would just lock up at that same point every time. You know, like, I would go into the BIOS and I would make some changes, but it nothing really helped. Uh, I, I got to a point where it was the lines, strange lines weren't showing up, but it would still lock up at the same point. And I, I kind of gave up at the moment on Windows 95. It, but to be honest, it, that too might have to do with my copy of Windows 95. I was trying to install Windows 95C, I believe, and that was that's really more for like, that was like an OEM only version. Um, it did add some some extra things, but I think I've had trouble with that on other certain machines in the past too. So uh, I think I'm going to play it safer right now. We're just going to look at a very small number of some DOS games to see how it runs those, and then I'm going to try again to install Windows 95. But I'm going to try the more standard Windows 95 version B this time. So we'll see if that installs or if we get that same problem. So. We're going to try some games on it now. Hopefully when I plug it in and get it all set up, it just powers on and goes into DOS and we don't have any problems. And uh, we'll see how it performs uh, with a couple games. And the answer to that question, is it now working reliably, is no! Um, now I haven't touched anything between when it was just working reliably, it seemed, for a good while. And then I turned it on and I got nothing at all. No image, nothing. So I turned it off turn it back on and now I just get this constant beeping uh, uh, I, I hate this machine I I cannot wait to disassemble it alright and now it's uh, it's working again so what did I do uh, all I did is I just popped out the video card and I reseated it and um, it seems like it was just secure as it was last time and uh, now it's working I don't know maybe See, I've tried putting it in different slots. Uh, I know some other boards maybe have issues with certain slots, or maybe the video card behaves best in the first slot, or the second, or the third. I've tried them all, and I keep encountering this issue. Uh, I've cleaned the contacts on the card, so I, I don't think it's that. So I don't, I don't know what's going on there. But we did uh, boot up into DOS. Um, I used uh, generic... Uh, drivers for that uh, Opti sound card um, so that should be working and there's our uh, mouse driver I didn't use QT mouse for once I don't know why just want to try something different so uh, I <laughs> uh, will try running some games on here and um, hopefully it won't give me more issues hopefully I can get through the benchmarks and games without that happening again and before we run the benchmarks, I just want to make it clear, I'm kind of doing these sort of thrift store find uh, videos sort of as is. I'm not putting a ton of effort into like, you know, getting things working just right. So uh, I'm just kind of approaching these, uh, you know, as if I'm a person that's not super computer savvy from that time period. So, I mean, I'm not tweaking anything in the BIOS. I'm not like spending two hours playing around with drivers to get it to work just right. I'm not going to be running any like special utilities to speed up video, anything like that. It's just kind of as is. Um, you know, I, I'll do a little bit to, to try to get it at least like workable, but I'm not going to go into any like in-depth tweaking. So it's kind of like default bio settings and um, as far as the games goes, it's just, I'm not really going to play around with options a ton to get it working just right. It's just kind of like trying to get it 
running as simple as possible. Uh, so it's kind of like trying to get it to run decently with the least amount of effort. So just keep that in mind uh, when we're looking at these benchmarks. Although, uh, because I am interested in that sound card, I am going to put a little bit more effort into the sound card with trying different options and seeing how that goes. Okay, and real quick, uh, we're just going to do our kind of default benchmarks, um, at least so we can compare maybe with other machines in the future. Uh, and everything ran as you would expect, you know, with a Pentium 166. Everything seemed to run, you know, respectably. Um, we got, you know, over 30 FPS in, in Quake. Uh, so, yeah, everything ran okay. Um, I didn't find any, like, glaring graphical glitches or anything that ran, like, oddly slow or anything like that. So, yeah, it did okay. All right, so now let's look at some games. We'll start with Ultimate Doom. Um, now, with sound on these, I usually tried to play the game, like, with General MIDI, Rolling Sound, and then the emulated FM. Um, well, I'll let you be the judge on these. Um, I generally got the best results with Roland and, and not General MIDI, but there was also some weird anomalies, like I would play it in General MIDI and it would sound like okay, and then I would restart the machine and I'd have the exact same settings and the sound would be all off and, and wor sounded worse. I don't know what was going on there. Um, but yeah, take a listen to some of these.
Ready! Engines ready! Go! Well, my uh, Windows 95 CD just doesn't seem to work in this machine, even though it ran the other CDs just fine, and many of those were CDRs, so uh, yeah, I think I'm going to call this little uh, project over at this point. Uh, I, I looked around if I had like a spare CD drive just sitting around easy access that I can just switch and try that but uh, yeah I, I've tried several times with this CD in this machine it's just it's just not reading it for whatever reason um, so it, it's not a big deal anyways I think we've gleaned what we needed to glean from this uh, little machine so uh, I'm gonna wrap it up alright and that's a quick look at this uh, this is thrift store computer find I didn't actually find this one at a thrift store it's more like a swap meet so uh, still in the same ballpark there it should work um, it's hard to I guess my biggest frustration with this machine was reliability but that's kind of hard to critique in 2021 uh, because I don't know if that's how this machine ran 20 or 30 years ago caps might be going bad it's old equipment, so there might be things failing on it that are causing reliability issues now. So I don't really know if it would have had these same issues in 1995 or 96 or whatever. Um, so it's hard to critique it on reliability. Um, as of right now, though, in 2021, finding this machine, it, that 
motherboard, I just having a lot of reliability issues with it just not working sometimes. I had to play around a lot with like IDE drives and cables. It just it just was a little bit frustrating. Um, now I might take this thing apart, clean it, put it back to get put the motherboard back in, reseat everything, and it might run fine. I, I don't know. I'm not going to do that, but that's a possibility. Uh, there could just be a, like a little short somewhere, or just something's not connected quite right. Um, so keep that in mind. So that's all I have to say about reliability. Um, other than that, like let's say it, there wasn't reliability issues and it just kind of ran. I mean, it's in my opinion, it's pretty serviceable. Um, that ATI card, you know, it's a, it, you know, I've used those cards before. They're like decent 2D cards. There's no 3D acceleration uh, on this machine, but you could add a 3D card. Uh, that shouldn't be too hard. Um, I don't know what was going on. I just had no luck with Windows 95. I assume Windows 98 would probably install just fine on there if you wanted to. Um, but, I mean, the big thing I was really interested in this card was the sound card. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. I'll reserve most of that judgment for you guys in the comments, what you guys thought of it. I, I didn't really care for it. <laughs> it didn't... It's like sometimes... Sometimes... I had the best luck with... Um, well, unless I just set it for, like, ad-lib, that seemed to be the best, <laughs> like, you know, sounding. Uh, but if I wanted to try to use that, the MIDI uh, on board, uh, setting it to Roland or Sound Canvas generally seemed to sound a little bit better than if I set it to just general MIDI. Um, but it, it, it's like sometimes it sounded okay, and then sometimes it was, like, really bad. So I don't know. Uh, like I said, with these videos and these machines, I'm not putting a ton of effort into it, so... Uh, maybe I could. Maybe it just needed different drivers. Uh, probably not. I mean, it, I just kind of use generic Opti drivers for that chipset. But I don't know. Maybe different drivers of some sort are out there that would have helped. Uh, maybe there was just some kind of setting I was missing. I don't know. But it, it just sounded bad. It wasn't like an easy. Oh, you you click here or you run the auto setup and it it ran and it sounds okay. It was just. It was not great. And even with a lot of games running, like the auto setup, where the, where the game would suggest the best settings, it sounded bad or it would lock up. And it just wasn't the greatest. So I don't know. Maybe one of you guys would have better luck with a card like that. Or if you have any comments or suggestions, uh, put them in the comments. I'm not going to come back to this machine, but maybe somebody else that watches this video has a, a similar setup that could use the advice. Um, I, I like this case. Uh, I'm probably I'm, I'm gonna pull that board and probably the parts and I'm going to repurpose this case. I, I have a couple ideas. Um, it's an AT uh, case, so I, I might put in like something really like a weird faster 46 type machine. I, I might make this into. I'm not sure. I like. I think that's an LED down there. Uh, I swear when I first got this machine and started it up, it said 166 uh, in the LED display down there. I don't know. I didn't really do anything. It just the next time I I powered it up, there's nothing there, and it got me thinking. Like, did I really even see something there the first time? But I I swear I saw it display uh, 166. Uh, yes, I tried hitting the turbo button on and off and jiggling wires, and I just couldn't get that LED display to come back. But um, when I pull this case apart, I'm gonna see if I can get the LED running. That would be cool because. Uh, LED displays on cases are always awesome. Uh, so, yeah, you might see this case in a future video, and I'll show you guys what I did to it, uh, hopefully. So, um, that's about all. If you guys have any comments about this particular setup, or if you had a machine like it back in the day, um, let me know. And especially if you have any comments about that sound card, or that Dream MIDI chipset on there. Uh, let us know in the comments. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.